as I'll summarize, essentially, the thought being that if we continue to see the large unemployment claims that we've already seen, keep in mind, we saw 3.28 and then two consecutive readings of more than 6 million Americans filing per week for unemployment, that things would not necessarily indicate to him that we would see uh, an uptick and a strong V-shaped recovery like some had been projecting. It starts to see uh, starts to seem rather that the, the theme uh, has been worsening projections for what that recovery could look like. And I want to bring on Yahoo Finance's Brian Chung, who has more tied to that as well. Brian, of course, you've been tracking uh, all of the projections that we've seen from various Fed officials. And uh, Kashkari doesn't necessarily sound like he's really a one-off here. We have been hearing projections that it might not be realistic to think uh, that we could get a V-shaped recovery. Yeah, and what Neil Kashkari said in that uh, CBS interview was that he's, quote, focusing on 18 months because we're looking around the world as they relax the economic controls, the virus flares back up again, end quote. He was referring to how long uh, the U.S. economy might need to expect shutdowns in some form uh, before we really get back to anything that could be resembling something like the pre-coronavirus world. Now, that doesn't necessarily translate to 18 months of uh, you know full economic shutdown. It doesn't even necessarily translate to 18 full months of policies that would need to be uh, you know, launched by the Federal Reserve or fiscal policymakers to make sure that the economy is afloat. It just means that's when he would expect that at least some portions of the United States might be shut down. Pretty uh, important commentary from one of the voting members of this year's Federal Open Market Committee. And Neil Kashkari is really echoing what a lot of other policymakers have said, maybe not with the specificity to that time frame, but really just in terms of saying that the uh, economic recovery is something that's really difficult to, to predict. And uh, unfortunately, a lot of people in the media and a lot of people who are watching the Federal Reserve would like to have some sort of idea, some sort of uh, you know general time frame for when we might be able to get out of this. But because it's a, a health pandemic, it's really difficult to predict. And economists, or for that matter, uh, even epide epidemiologists will have a really difficult time trying to forecast that kind of stuff. But at least for the Federal Reserve's part, Neil Kashkari and a number of other Fed, Fed officials saying, look, for right now, we're going to use whatever the Fed tools that we have available uh, to combat this and to try to keep the U.S. economy afloat. Yeah, we also got the update from uh, Fed Vice Chair Richard Clarido when we look at what he's thinking about here on the economic front. You're right. I mean, when we when we hear from officials, there's a lot of unknowns when it comes to the health side. But looking at the data we've seen so far in terms of inflation fears, deflationary fears, uh, it did seem like he said that we can escape a uh, deflationary trap moving forward. Uh, that was at least optimistic to hear from him. But there are still concerns that that could happen here in the U.S. Yeah, well, there's a lot of questions about exactly how this pandemic is going to affect prices. When we think about inflation, it had basically been tepid post-crisis, post the last financial crisis, right? We never really saw uh, prices spike all that much. It seems like this is the lower for longer kind of phenomenon in the monetary policy world. And I think because of that, that's guided a lot of the Fed thinking that uh, even with a huge exogenous shock like the coronavirus, we shouldn't necessarily expect prices to rebound that quickly, that there's kind of fundamental differences in the way structurally our labor market and our uh, consumption practices work that would not uh, see inflation rising to anywhere close to the, what we saw in the 1970s, for example. But as you mentioned, uh, Vice Chairman Rich Clarida saying in that Bloomberg interview before Market Bell this morning that, uh, you know, the Federal Reserve is paying attention to how the recovery would uh, kind of get you put together by the Federal Reserve officials saying that he could see the Federal Reserve unwinding the nine liquidity facilities that it's open, many of which have been unprecedented. We don't really know exactly what the effects of those are going to be in the long term. But in regards to any sort of questions about when the Fed might raise rates from the zero bound, he said, look, it's really not the time to be thinking about that. He said, quote, it's going to be a long way down the road before the Fed starts thinking about that again. So something worth paying attention to as we uh, try to shift our thinking from how do we get out of this uh, you know, pandemic to how do we then engineer the recovery? All right, there you go. At least that thinking. We'll get more updated thinking tomorrow in another Fed exclusive interview with Brian Chung. Uh, he'll join us in speaking with Atlanta Fed President Raphael Bostic right here uh, on tomorrow's edition of Y5 PM here on Yahoo Finance. Do not miss that. Hey, investors, Zach Guzman here. Are you interested in learning more about the markets and getting the latest financial news? Well, then click right here to subscribe to our Yahoo Finance YouTube channel. Get the latest up to the minute market analysis, big interviews in the world of finance, and information on how to manage your money every day, wherever you are.